it is finally May. I've read a lot of books these couple months and I want to share it with you. Hey guys, it's me again, Veronica, and I am here to bring you a wrap up of the books I have read these past two months, which would be March and April of 2014. I think I'm gonna do this thing bi-monthly because I don't think monthly is gonna do it for me, and plus I don't read like a massive amount of books in a month. Well, I kind of do, but like not a lot of them you would find interesting, and if you do, then I suggest you friend me on Goodreads and look at my books that I have read. That would make it so much easier for the both of us so I don't have to recap every single thing I've read. So I'll just tell you guys what books stand out to me the most these past couple months and I'll just jump right into it. The first book I remember reading in March was Fire and Flood by Victoria Scott. It's basically this dystopian kind of Hunger Games Divergent kind of thing. It's a dystopian book, what else can I say about it? I rated it three stars on Goodreads, so I liked it, but I didn't love it per se. It came out back in February 25th this year, and basically all these people are in a race to get a cure for their loved ones. All these people enter this race, kind of like a competition, kind of like the Hunger Games, kind of. doesn't matter the age, you get this specific invitation, and usually you get this invitation when your family member or someone who you love is sick with this uncurable disease, quote unquote, that this government figure has a cure to, but they will only give the cure to the winner of this race. So this race covers four landscapes, I believe. Um, there's a jungle, there is a desert, there's also an ocean and a mountain. But in this book, it only covers the first two, the jungle and the desert. Tala Holloway, the main character of the story, her brother is sick and she wants to get the cure for him, so she enters this race when she gets the invitation, and she joins forces with other people, and they get this Pandora, which is basically the fire and floods version of parachutes. It, it helps them in the race. If you want to learn more about this, then I will link it down below to the Goodreads page so you can read the summary for yourself because I don't think I'm going to have enough time to read it to you. Next book. The next couple books I've read back in March were Midnight Frost and Killer Frost by Jennifer Estep. Those are the last two books in the Mythos Academy series. I will have a series review up for Mythos Academy up soon if I find the time, but I really enjoyed the series. I didn't love it, but it was a decent read. If you like fluff and funny and magic and Greek stuff, then definitely check it out. The next couple books I have read in March were the Testing and Independent Study by Joelle Charbonneau. Once again, it's a dystopian novel, young adult novel, and it reminds me a lot like Divergent, more so than Hunger Games. Partially because there's this whole testing that defines their life and what jobs they'll take in the future as adults and where they live and stuff and they can't go back to their families. So it's really similar to Divergent in that aspect. I really, really liked this series. The third book is coming out later this year, I believe. And I, I can't describe it. Just check it out. I'll link those books down in the down bar and I think it's a go-to if you love dystopians and young adult novels. Like in my last video, I mentioned that I was venturing into the new adult, adult literature genre. So the first book in March of that genre I have read was Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. It's a really, really cute, cute story. I, I, uh, this is why I love contemporary new adult novels. They fill you with feels. You don't need to read a dystopia or some crazy love triangle. You just need to get your hands on a contemporary new adult because sometimes young adult is a little too sweet, but new adult has all the harsh and rough emotions that make you just burst with feels. Like, seriously. So maybe someday is a really cute story about this girl. She lives with her boyfriend and she finds out that her boyfriend is cheating on her with her best friend behind her back and she was seriously considering of having a future with him because she moved in with him, college, everything. Yeah. 
her neighbor, who is this lyricist, guitar writer person for this band, this famous band. He needs a muse and then she goes to her balcony every night to listen to him play. Turns out he's deaf. All this stuff ensues and she finds out that her boyfriend's cheating and then he's there to comfort her. It's just so good. I definitely recommend this book. It's lots of feels. And there's this very last chapter. I'm warning you. If you are uncomfortable with adult content, you might want to skip over the last chapter, but everything else is pretty happy and dandy and lots of tension and feels and cries. Ah, love it. Love it. King Size Beds and Happy Trails by Cassie May. I read this back in March too. It's basically this girl, she's hung up, she's in high school, she's hung up over this guy crush she has. So she tries her best to impress him. So then she goes on this ski trip. In order to impress him, she wears her fancy bikini and tries to act all flirty. But you know, it just doesn't work. And her best friend, he's secretly in love with her and it's so sweet how he tries to take care of her and all this tension. Ah, contemporary novels, love. Definitely check this out if you are not looking for a magical, dystopian young adult novel. This is just regular happy feels, like anything that can happen in real life. Check this out. The next book I have read, also in the contemporary new adult genre, is Third Degree by Julie Cross. Now, I think I related a lot to this book, even though there's a lot of steam and I don't really relate to steam. This girl, she's like a prodigy, she's a doctor, and she's only like 20? 19? I think she's 19. She already has so many degrees and she's so smart and she has no people skills, so she goes to college because her supervisor doesn't give her a spot at the hospital to become a doctor and she gets real pissed at that so she has to attend college like a normal teenager and she has all of these experiences including romance and it's just really sweet and I learned a lot medicine wise and I want to be a doctor when I'm older so this was a really informative and fun and romantic and such a good read. Definitely recommend this. But there's a lot of steam. Just be warned. The next book I read was a really light fluffy novel called Ask Again Later by Liz Zukas. I don't know how to say it. Zukas. The narration got me confused sometimes because it's not multiple POVs but it's like multiple scenarios at the same time. There's like two alternate universes but they have the same beginning and the same end. So if you want to read like this really fun story about this girl who can't decide who to go to prom with, it, you should check it out. This book I read back in April, I knew I had to read it because apparently it's becoming a movie and that book is The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight by Jennifer E. Smith. She also wrote This Is What Happy Looks Like, I also read that book last year, but this book, it was full of feels. It wasn't super intense, but it left me happy. And although she does fall in love practically at first sight in the first 24 hours, a lot happens within that 24 hours. It's nothing like a life-death scenario or anything where they bond over that, but there's a lot of chemistry and angst and problems, but it's really fun and I really liked it. So I can't wait for the movie to come out whenever it's coming out, whoever's getting casted. I'm definitely going to watch the movie, so you should read the book first. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite read of practically the last four months. It's To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. It's a new book. It came out in April, I believe, and it just I love this and it's going to be a duo, it's going to be like two book series. I'm going to wait for the second book, but the first book is so full of feels. Like every other book I mentioned before, yeah, they have feels, but this one's like feels. I, I relate to this book more than the other contempt novels I've read. Like I, I fangirls over this. This girl, she's half Asian, I'm half Asian, she's in high school, I'm in high school. Like seriously, this is, this is me. Like she doesn't approach her crushes. So she instead writes them a letter as if she's going to send it to them to get all her her angst out to like get over them and I just I so relate to that even though I've never done that before I don't approach them I just keep it inside a little fester one day when it's like spring cleaning she finds out that her box of letters are gone and then she finds out that all her letters sent to her like middle school and high school crushes they were sent and she flips the freak out. This 
book is so funny and so full of feels. It will leave you wanting more. I rated it five stars. It's like an A plus. Highly recommend. I think this will, might be my favorite contemporary novel of this year, if not like ever. This book is like my holy grail of funny contemporary young adult novel. Like, this is the top. The next book I read back in April was Rebel Bell by Rachel Hawkins, and it's highly talked about. You probably might have heard it before. It's about this girl, she becomes a paladin after the janitor kisses her and she has to protect this guy who apparently is her arch nemesis in school and there's a lot of hidden tension in there. It was a funny light read. It's not really contemporary but it feels like one even though she has magical powers and is like a dop here. She's like super power. The next book I read back in April was The Fifth Wave. I am so behind on this. There's a movie coming out with Chloe Moretz and I I'm just jumping on this bandwagon right now, so I read it, I finished it, I loved it, I'm waiting for the infinite seat. Come at me! Check it out. If you, if you have not read it, read it, because it's good. Even though there's multiple perspectives, which got me confused in the beginning, it really gives you a wider look of the world Rick Yancey built. Fifth Wave, Rick Yancey, definitely check it out. One last book that I'm going to give a special mention that I read back in April was I See London by Chanel Clayton. Basically this kind of coming of age, new adult contemporary novel. This girl, she goes to a university in London because she gets rejected for Harvard. I so feel you girl, I feel ya. So she goes to a highly prestigious university in London, full scholarship because if you got Harvard grades and you don't get into Harvard, you're gonna get into somewhere else. It's bound to happen. But she goes to this really prestigious school and all these students are rich kids, like daughters and sons of politicians and royalty and stuff. So there's a lot of um, sexual tension between her and then this dude, what's his name, Samir? Something like that. But she doesn't hook up with him right away because she gets the impression that he's a playboy, so she stays away from him. But she goes to this nightclub one night with her friends, fake ID and all, like she drinks and stuff. And she meets this guy at the bar and he's like super hot, super British, super rich, and he owns like a line of clubs. So she lies about her age. She says she's 23, I think she's only 19. And she says she's doing her master's, but she's only getting her undergraduate degree, so um, lots of lies there. I am bad at describing this. Eventually, they start to get serious, and he wants more from her, even though he's like 26 or 27, somewhere around there. He's way older than her. Things happen. It's kind of a love triangle. Not much of a love triangle if you kind of read more into it, you know? I predict where this is going to end. And this is the first book in the series, the second book has yet to come out. Or if it did come out, I still need to read it. Beware of the steam. There is steam. Mostly towards the end of the book, but there's steam. I'm warning you, there's steam. So those are all the books I have read back in March and April. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've read any of the ones that I've read, what did you think of it? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys later.